。我的好朋友，谢谢你哦。Dear residents of Fungolis, good evening to you. 大家晚上好。In this by-election, you will be faced with a choice again to choose a candidate that can best represent not just your interests, but a candidate that can ensure we have a government that listens to its people. The choice is between an opposition party and the PAP. To many fair-minded Singaporeans, a by-election is a good opportunity to bring more political balance to Singapore. The ruling party brings with it a tried and tested approach. Like in Al Junid in GE2011, where it promised residents that one of its candidates may be a minister, a potential speaker, it has done so again in Pongolis. Doubting Dr. Ko to be a potential office holder. For our part, the Workers' Party continues to set the foundations of establishing a credible and responsible opposition force that brings checks and balances to Singapore, coupled with a desire to raise the level of transparency and accountability in Singapore. In a few years from now, in 2015, Singapore will celebrate its 50th year of independence. 5-0. The old ways of one-party dominant, uh, one-party dominant political system are likely to still be around. But Singaporeans must think seriously about having a more well-represented parliament, at least in line with the 40% of Singaporeans who voted in the last general elections. Who wish to see a multi-party democracy develop in Singapore, and there's no better place for this than in Pongolis SMC. In the United Kingdom and other Commonwealth countries, the parliamentary opposition is referred to not as the opposition, but as Her Majesty's loyal opposition. Not because the opposition is supposed to be loyal to the ruling party, but because it should be loyal to the head of state and loyal to its citizens. So far, there has been no such concept of a loyal opposition in Singapore politics. The PAP certainly does not want to recognise such a concept, as it has long said that there is not enough talent for a two-party system to take root. So the opposition today in Singapore has to establish its loyalty to the state and to the people through other means, and we in the Workers Party have done so by standing by our brand of responsible and rational politics. The road to a more balanced parliament will be tough and may even be long. But I believe, as long as Singaporeans stand up and have the courage and the desire to make this a better place, more just, more tolerant, more equal for their fellow men and women, Singaporeans should have no fear about the prospects of multi-party democracy, let alone a two-party system. Let me share my own experience with you. In my short 18 months since I became an MP, after about a year of conducting my Meet the People sessions, sometime in May and June last year, I reviewed all my Meet the People session cases and began to identify those which came up all the time, repeatedly came up. One particular issue was very glaring. That was the case of rental housing, public rental housing affecting Malay families. They usually had to wait very long before they got their flat. And more worryingly, many were being rejected by the HDB. Like public housing, which is for sale, rental housing is controlled by the ethnic integration policy introduced in 1989, which stipulates how many Chinese, Indian, Malay 
residents can occupy a typical block of flats. My uppermost concern was the current limit for Malay residents and whether it had already been reached. No PAP MP asked this question, so I filed it to the Ministry of National Development Minister, Kaur Boon Wan. The minister replied, he replied with the numbers. Quota limit for rental block was 25% for Malays, 87% for Chinese and 15% for Indians and others. But more worryingly, in providing his answer, the minister stated that the 25% quota for Malays had already been reached. This explained the answer to my additional question on the waiting time for Chinese, Malay, Indian and other applicants. Unsurprisingly, Malay families and, and, their, and applicants had to wait the longest as their quota limit had already been reached. Residents of Pongolese, resident, rent, I beg your pardon, rental flat appellants comprised of Singaporeans of all races who are in dire straits and they are in the low income bracket with a total household income of less than $1,500. Some of us worry about the cost of living today. We worry about the high property prices for our children's generation. But I ask you to stop for one minute and just think of the reality of living in a family which lives on less than $1,500 a month. Not in the future, but today. They are living in these circumstances today. Many of these applicants are in a poverty trap. Some move from one contract job to another. Others are divorcees with children. Then there are also ex-prisoners who have been shunned by their family and who need people to take a second chance on them so they can start life again and they want to be self-sufficient. Others come from families where relationships have broken down. I had even one unfortunate case where the applicant was a transvestite who needed an accommodation of his own but was unable to find a suitable partner because rental housing is not extended to singles. This situation is even more worse for Singaporeans who have foreign spouses. You are not eligible for rental flats. With the Minister's answer, I went to the Haugang, Aljunit Haugang Town Council and checked up some facts with my fellow MPs. And what was happening in the rental wards in Aljunit Haugang? Some interesting facts came up. The percentage of Malay households in many of the rental blocks in Aljunit Haugang was actually between 30 and 40 percent, well beyond the 25 percent limit established by Minister Kaur in Parliament. In one block, it was even close to 50 percent. I decided to ask a follow up question in Parliament to ask the Minister how many rental blocks. It, throughout Singapore had reached the 25% limit for rental housing for Malay applicants. In response to my question, Minister Kaur said about 60% of all rental blocks had reached the quota for Malay applicants. But interestingly and in fairness to the Minister, he said that the HDB was now reviewing the ethnic integration policy quota for rental flats because of this demand from various ethnic groups. This was a good result from the review of all my MPS cases that I did in May 2012. And I certainly look forward to the result of the HDB's review of the ethnic integration policy quota for rental flats. My fellow Singaporeans, policy change in a democratic country can be very slow. It may take time for policies to take effect on the ground. But that does not mean we give up on change or give up making Singapore a better place for all Singaporeans, regardless of race, language or religion, especially for those who need, need that help. A few days ago, Prime Minister Lee said that he did not see any strong views or alternatives being presented by the opposition in Parliament. I can understand why the Prime Minister made that statement. He was not speaking as the Prime Minister. He was speaking as the Secretary General of the People's Action Party. But we just have to look back at the national announcements made in the last week or so. More MRT lines by 2030. 
a promise to investigate and review the relationship between a fully owned PAP company and town councils. A promise to allocate more HDB flats for first timers. And a new revised family and parenthood package, parenthood package announced yesterday. All of these announcements were strategically made just before the Pongol by election or during the Pongol by election hustings. The PAP can make strategic calculations during elections, but they tell voters please don't vote tactically to introduce more alternative voices in Parliament. The PAP forgets that even ordinary voters in Pongolis have the choice to vote strategically and even tactically in the interests of all of Singapore. My fellow Singaporeans, nothing reaches the ears of the PAP faster than the power of your vote. There is a lot more scope for a larger opposition presence in Parliament so that any ruling party, not just the PAP, works hard for all Singaporeans. The Workers' Party has done well to get along this road and we hope you can consider voting an opposition candidate into Parliament for the betterment of all Singaporeans. One more PAP candidate will send them the message that all is well in Singapore. Do you think the PAP has done enough? No. Can it do more? Yes. The PAP will only do more if it always has to look over its shoulder, knowing full well that there are Singaporeans with a hammer of alternative views behind them. Residents of Pongolis, an opposition presence in Parliament is vital for Singapore's continued prosperity and success. We are a mature economy now. We must continue down the path of transparency and accountability and transform ourselves into a mature democracy. As a people, as a country, as a society, we all will be better for it. Vote for the Workers' Party. Vote for Lili Lian for Pongolese. Thank you very much.